Hello, everyone, and welcome back. It is I, Lucid, <laughs> and I am joined by Maryland. Howdy, gamers. Sorry, it's late. We're we're a little uh, a little loopy. Yes, it is pretty late, much later for you. Well, a couple hours later. A couple hours. Uh, okay, so Maryland, what happened last time? Well, you know, it was a relatively quiet term, I suppose, because we're in that transition phase where we've got Van Heim finally making peace with Ashdod, and then he will attack Pangaea, but he right. has to finish off his turns of NAP cancellation. So no action there. Poor Alm is getting pounded. Poor Ashdod is getting pounded, and Pelagia is... He said he might put up uh, Astral Nexus again. Yep. That could be a very significant thing. And I see a, a global did go up. Well, let's take a look at that. Oh. Okay, there you go. Attempting Nexus. From what I know, estimate, uh, it will beat Mother Oak, Earthblood, Deepwell, Vinch. Okay, Earth. Wait, what? Oh, was he that not? was down last turn. He, he must not have seen it was down. He must have just been like, this is the turn I'm yellowing anyway. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. So he he cast it the exact turn he should have, but he didn't even know there was a spot open. Yeah, I guess he didn't see that spot. We saw it. But That's I... so unlike Arco to not know those details. Um, Ventral Water... Well, he did comment that, that he's got a lot of real life, so he's... I don't think he's putting as much time as he used to into these terms. Right. Uh, it'll lose the Gift of Health. Right. So we were saying he'd probably be worried about that. It will beat Mount uh, Chaining Discount Astral Corruption cast by a Blood 9 or less. Knowing my luck, it will fail. Um, because, yeah, that is the other thing about Blood is you could theoretically empower Blood up to be really high. to get You could like have a Blood 15 mage. He'd probably be a horror mark to yeah. hell, but you could do it. And, um, and then cast a, a big global with it, so... Yeah. Uh, moving some poorly scripted stuff towards the throne of Earth to protect. Alm wasting his army in the area wasn't great. I could have set up, as I already did, um, Gem Drain Pan army to fight and then lose. Won't bother with raiding. No free gems anyway this turn. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. And it goes up. Uh, there we Look go. Look at that. Let's let's look at the global. There it is. There it is. He got it. He got it. The perfect turn. That's the right. Perfect turn. So you know, it's probably funny if he never knew that uh, that that global wasn't up. He may. This may be the first time him finding out that he didn't actually get good luck because he was like, knowing my luck, it won't go up. And then probably yeah. it happened. And he's like, oh, I finally got good luck. And then now he watches this and he's going to be like. Oh, it wasn't luck after all. There was an empty global spot. That's pretty funny. That is definitely pretty funny. Yeah. All right. Uh, so we've I got just, a message. Uh, oh, what's that? Well, mild diversion, but just uh, an hour and a half ago, I uh, I had a game and um, one of the teams destroyed one throne for the win. So we had talked previously about, you know, is that a viable option for whoever's got the most thrones in this game is is destroying a throne with a doom horror right. going to be an option to win? And I had not been in a game where that had been done before, but it just happened. There you go. First time I've, I wasn't the one who did it. I was the, the one who lost due to it, but, but it was a good move. It was yeah. a smart move. That's cool. Because they were sitting there. We were desperately hanging on to our last thrones, trying to be sure. So uh, it just when with Nexus back up, just made me think of that. Yeah, and Nexus definitely enables more stuff like that. So, but it's um, not to Pelagia's advantage to destroy thrones right now. Right, not think. right now. He needs to use Nexus to build power. So, um, okay, a message from Kirby. Alas, thus Alice passes. Pretender of Ulm felled by a doom horror while trying to cloud trap peace somewhere. Oh. Okay, that was oh, what we thought. We thought it was a doom such horror. A, such a cheap spell. Yeah. As holder of Earthblood Deepwell Global, she was mostly sitting at home forging boosters. I had to go back through the video to see how long I'd had that global up. It looks like something around turn 40 that I min cast it. So it's well over a thousand gems made over the course of the game. Oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> Whether or not they were used wisely is debatable. <laughs> Smiley face. <laughs> <laughs> I would agree with that. I would agree yeah. with that. Yeah, uh, well, we've talked about that. 
Otherwise, the slow grind continues. I'll be attempting to recover and consolidate my things using Vortex of Returning and focus defense on my inner throne. Uh, on the inner throne. I suspect that when Pan Van attacked me, that Pan and Van attacked me, they went for Vanarus's Satissa's cap in part. And Pan and Van. Okay. In part because they hoped I would be spawning vampires there. Um, other than them being caps, of course. Spoilers, I have not. All my vampires have been summoned at the Inner Throne, because if at all possible, it will be one of the last provinces I lose, even after my cap. Pan is, do, uh, is doing good cracking my palisades, though, so I'm having a hard time defending the land. Yeah. That's a, that's a good comment. I usually try to spread my vampire summoning around so that I lose some. Yeah. I don't lose all of them. So, you know, that's a different strategic way to think about it. Right. But in his case, I could see his point because, yeah, for him to pull back everything and just try to hold that very last province would make sense in this situation. Yeah. Um, we got a message from Pangea. Thinking, uh, I think uh, I'm going to go down a bunch of provinces net this turn. Uh, it feels like I could have done much better this turn. Could have done this turn so much better, but I'm doing, but I oh got, I can't read, but all I'm doing is setting up uh, for my next throne siege turn after next. Yeah. So he's, he, he's just slowly harassing people to keep them distracted right. while he preps to grab these last, what does he need? Two thrones? Something like that. Game? Not many. Uh, we can look at that after this. Um, you want to read the Ashdod message for us? Power defense turn six. I wonder if we start seeing more boss units. <laughs> hmm. Lots of pan vamp raiders to my north. Let's see how I do this turn. I expect the lifelong protection returning golem to be back in southern Jotunheim. Raiding back some land there, so I'll hopefully get some predictable moves from it. Let's see how the counter raiding goes. Waiting for Van to join the war. That should hopefully spread Pan more and make it easier to take some fight. Rather annoyed about the Citadel and the former Ananuki site going up, I do expect the Brithia to fall too. Now I will have to be prepared to defend thrones all the time from dryads. Fun. Just imagine the tears without vengeful water up. Creating my own assassin bullshit so that I can get some chuckles out of the end of this game too. Asymmetry at work. I wonder what she's making. Uh, uh, succubi? Yeah, I wonder. That's it. He might. Or maybe just. Uh... Maybe just um, the hearts. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, I this really has me wondering then, because he didn't attack. Oh. So this is the pan and battle I, against uh, Debrithia. There we go. <laughs> Boy, there wasn't much left in here. No. Holy cow. Yeah, that's not much. But... Look at those demon knights. I, if, this must have been a fake army from Ashdod next door. I don't know how you could allow Pan to take this. I don't know. I mean, on it's one hand, it's dangerous, shame. right? Because, like, if you imagine Ashdod moved here, and then Pan had maybe had, like, a bunch of dryads or something sitting in that fort. Yeah, yeah. Um, but. Well, this is, the result of this is pretty obvious. Yeah. They're just oh foul vapors and yeah look at that yeah I mean that's a wow. that's a stomp okay pour one out that's Nick right pour one out for Nick yeah where's my message key right yeah Florida undivided goddess of Uruk has been permanently vanquished <laughs> at the end she did not rule a single province and now she has nowhere to return yeah I can I can quickly pop up and just make sure I got it right who that was I'm sure it was Nick oh yeah it was Nick Knight. Um, yeah. So turn 113, you almost made it to the end, Nick. Nice try. Well done. Well done. With we uh, poured out a lot for people. Yeah. Some some Jedi level Diplo at the end slash uh, <laughs> slash camouflage. Just nobody saw him over here. Well, that army uh, that army beside it of Ashdod does look smaller this turn. No, 370. Uh, I don't think it would be that big. Yeah, I don't know. I, I think he had to take this fight. You can't not take this fight. 
I and I I mean would like you, you know like we would said he had a hope though. Huh? Yeah. Oh, he would have won. I mean, he has way better. If this if this army was even seventy percent real, he's got way better types of demons than Pan yeah. does. Yeah, it's just a much higher quality army. Um, he's got oh, shock resistance too, so like the storm demons aren't going to do much. Yeah, he's got magic weapons, so like army. the fact they're ethereal won't matter. Well, and he didn't even probe it. Yeah, I mean, I would have probed it see what it is i know he yeah, said in the messages where he's had army size items but i i can't remember so i don't know i wonder maybe he's, i don't know yeah i think it's i think it was a strategic error to to allow that to be taken by pan yeah because it's just one more fort that pan has now that's going to be making more dryads and you know if like if it's ashdod right. had taken this fort if this was ashdod's he would have like claim to raid around it now it's like all this is like pangea raiding territory and like taking forts from it's so much easier to take a fort from um from uruk than it is from pangea because pangea's well, gonna yeah. have dryads and stuff all in their forts so oh oh boy and it's it immediately adjacent to his throw yeah which is a bad place for it to be so this is interesting we have a vampire vampire raiding war here oh Pangea has a lot of blood slaves. Oh. And Only life one. for life oh. from Pangea. Poof. Poof. There we go. That's that. Uh, here we have another Pangean vampire. Two Pangean vampires coming through here. Here they're um... casting life for life. One of them is, I think. And the life for life Ooh. targets the Bane Lord, but does not kill him. Hmm. And Boy, this guy has a black points. bow, huh? Only four, four hit points. Yeah. Should have got, got him. Oh, Soul Slay's coming out here. This is a pretty good anti vampire squad. Yeah, not bad. Um, this guy's still tired from life, uh, life for life. And these the guys are lifeless, or... right? Are they, no, they're mindless. They're lifeless too, so they are not affected by soul vortex. No. But they don't kill very well. Oh. Oh, there it goes. Oh, okay. shit. Wait, what, what What? killed this guy? Control the dead? I thought it may have been the, the black bow. Oh, the black bow. Oh, yeah. So that means he got feeble-minded, right? Oh, he did. Yep. Magic okay, skill zero. So he's garbage. That's yeah, a good. I garbage. like this. This is clever. But he's got he's got gift from health, so, and when it yeah. reforms, it might get rid of it. That's true. But you know, as no. I mean, this was effective. Yeah, pretty effective. Would have been better, of course, to soul slay it. But he's been trying to do that too. This is, I think, a very good vampire defense here, or should be. Okay, he's out of ammo though on the Bane Lord. And yeah. now this guy's casting Wither Bones. And God, they just can't get through invulnerability. No. Oh, and the Bane Lord just died. Yeah. Where did it run? Oh, I think it died. What happened to these Astral Mages back here is what I want to know. They ran, I think. Did they? I just want to sit back here and look at them. What happened to them? Yeah. And they're soul slates. They're just not penetrating. <gasps> oh, they ran. Were they scripted to run? Why... Okay, one, two, three, four, five, five and run. And run. So they were scripted to run. Mm. They would have okay. won this and probably soul slayed the vampires if they sat around casting it. I think they would have, yeah. Oh. Too bad. But, you know, that was a calculation he made. You know, if you script them to run, then you if you lose from like some other hell stack of Pangea coming through, you have a chance yeah. to save the mages, but here it clearly was you know, like my, me coming in Monday morning quarterbacking, it was the wrong choice. Well, but you, yeah. Right. I mean, it turned out, but like you mentioned last last episode, he can't really prepare for any, all of these different types of raids that might come. So right. he's got to kind of do his best to guess which raid. He did comment in the message that this is very expected Vamp Lord raiding. Right. Yeah, he said there were a bunch of vampires to his north. So that's what he was preparing for. Um, 
took this one. See back. another one. Yeah. See another one just there to the southeast. Oh, Havana draw. What was this doing? Oh, just clearing out some Pelagian junk. Yeah. Um, I thought they made peace, Pelagian Van. Uh, this must have been ceded to to Vanheim as part of. Oh, some maybe they ceded. I, yeah. I don't. I don't know. I mean, could it, be. This is a little strange that this is given that Pelagia had given them underwater stuff too, but who knows? Well, who knows? Um, okay, so more of the rating. Let's see. We've got an Enkidu scout. We got okay, bone reader here. Okay, Ashdod putting up a fair amount of counter pressure, and I think, like Pangea predicted, Ashdod's going to be up in territory this turn. We've got yeah, yeah. A spectral mage here from Ashdod. Rating. Some very budget well, here. Go. Soul Vortex and Invulnerability. Click and self. Yeah. We haven't seen a lot of Spectral Mages this, this game. No, we haven't seen too many. We've seen a couple. Okay, there's a... This is interesting now. Because I... Okay, I look at this, I think, this could work. Oh, this is the He's light summoning two air call. elementals. Try to send it packing. Oh, but these imps are here already on this one guy. Uh, now he's yeah. casting Soul Slate to kill... But he's lost one. Oh. Okay, I'm Pangea is routed. routed. Okay, so the air elementals got the golem and went packing off home. Right, but really this was cheap. All this cost Pangea was teleport. This wasn't even a teleport. I think there's a normal phase movement. And uh, he's, you know, was, uh, I think it was eight gems for air elementals, and he loses an illusionist. Yeah, yeah. Just slowly bleeding him out. Oh, I've got uh, one of ours. Oh, yeah. The vengeful waters. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. Yeah, it's unfortunate we don't get to see the vengeful water kind of layer to this. No. We know what's going on. Right. Okay, let's take a look over here, because here we have... Oh, he's using Sylphs. That's interesting. Those are going to be pretty did good counter air... Did he have an Air Queen? He probably does, eh? He probably does. You can't, you can't summon Sylphs, right? You can get... Or can... No, you can. Right? Sylphs? No. Uh... I don't think so. Oh, no. it's Springhawks you get, not Sylphs. Yeah, no, not yeah. Sylphs. Sylphs are better than Springhawks. Okay. Are no, they... I think the only way to get Sylphs is an Air Queen on some of them. Okay. Or... Uh, oh, yeah, they have event. Glamour, and uh, Springhawks don't have this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They are pretty damn good, Dim. Yeah, they're not bad. So... A lot of Vampire Lord, some okay. horrors. Some horrors taking out. Let's see what this guy was scripted to do. Soul Slay. Oh, it was an Earth Random. That is a strange script. Hmm. Okay. Th oh, this was Magic Phase, though. So this guy would have been moving to, like, uh, reinforce this army or something, right? Yeah. 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 That would be the way the script. Right. Probably unexpected. And then Pangea raiding over here with the Lich takes out a Vampire Lord. Uh, this was defensive, though. So Pangea is moving on right. the defense. Right. Let's see what the Dominion is here. Written in Waters. This isn't Pelagia's Dominion over here. Pan raiding into Ooh. Pelagia. Kicking yeah. Pelagia back in the water. And it looks like he is unsuccessful. There's a lot of PD here. And some up air, elementals. some air elementals. A fire. And this is a, a small elemental. fire elemental. More air elementals. The nets are probably helpful too. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, the nets are making a difference there. Yeah, I mean that. Okay, minus uh, <laughs> minus six white centaur. Yeah. And the higher fat. So, yeah. You no, know, that was good. That was good. Good. Plodgy down, but not fruit. out. <clears throat> Uh, raiding here with this centaur thug, unsuccessful. And this, I mean, except for Vanheim, nah. he's really fighting the world now because he's like Pelagia has been leaving him alone, and Pan's like, are... I don't care, I'm gonna go fight you still. 
Yeah, those are super cheap thugs, I think. Oh, this guy's oh, yeah. look at that. Water one on frozen heart casting. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Please. that was super cheap. Please. Super cheap. Uh okay, so then we've covered that. How we we haven't covered Ohm, right? Oh god, Ohm just I see two through forts done. Right. Oh, so but as closing out the Ashdot thing, Ashdot is up in land and Pangea is down about the same amount. Yeah. Yeah, so his so, prediction was very accurate right. there. <clears throat> but um take support from Ulm here. This isn't yes. even worth watching. This is where Ulm had just lost this big army. Yeah. There there was nothing left there. And this is and also where took... Pelagio was commenting it would have been great if Ulm would have coordinated with him because he would have yes. tried to gym bait it or soften it up. Yeah. Uh, okay, so Pangea's finally... This fort he's been sitting on top of for forever. But there we go. He's now Rush storming. Demon Knights in. Demon Knights have cleared the gate. Frost Fiends have comes. land in the back. And these guys are no joke in, um... In cold. Well, they've been buffed. <laughs> And there's the devils. There's the devils. Yeah. Look at that. Yikes. It's um That was a wipe. Yeah, it's not looking good. Pretty brutal. The Manticore is holding up a little bit, but yeah. not for long. And the fear isn't gonna have much effect. No, not against demons. No. And uh, yeah, there we go. Now this um, this uh, is not a throne, but no, it was kind of like the la one of the last bastions of of Ulmish territory near Satis. Yeah, and uh, I see another fort that got taken. Oh gosh, uh, we so we've seen these two. So he's gotten two forts already. Which which one are you looking yeah, at? Yeah, to the northeast. The throne. Oh my gosh. So Pelagi attacks on the outside. He's got a Pearl King with a Ring of Returning, okay. a Dawn Fang. Very so cool. He's just trying to burn burn gems. Yeah. Oof. Oh, get zapped by life for life. And did it actually die? No. No, I, oh. it didn't. But I, I wish we could see. Well, we probably can see. He got hit by... How can he cast by... two life for lives? <clears throat> oh. 44 points of damage. Yeah. Well, let's see if that killed Oof. him. Well, it was in the arm, so it shouldn't have. Oh, okay. I just want to see how many hit points he, he has. Could that, like, could it even kill him? Take, oh, we got real close, because it's 46. Did he have, oh, the first one did uh, zero. He's got a bottle of... Uh, yeah. Elixir of life. Yeah. But the first one did zero. How did the first one do zero? Because he doesn't have Twist Fate on him. He doesn't have I'm luck. Wondering. I don't know. Let's see. Blessing. Wow. Oh, wait. I can okay. scroll somehow with this. Is it page up? No. Do you know the hotkeeper uh, scrolling in this? Plus, I know that. Plus. Plus and minus, I think. Yeah, there you go. Uh, for zero. That's the Pearl full detail. Smith died and lives again. Okay, so the first one triggered his bottle. The second one, that's why it's showing a zero damage oh. because he died, but he came back to life. Oh. Yeah. So he used the bottle. Damn. Okay, because this first yeah. one, I was confused. This first one did 47, which was enough. He had yes, 46 he hit points. Okay. So that killed him. Yeah. But the second one with an arm, I believe, I'm quite sure, you can only take, uh, you can't be killed by an arm hit. Right. You lose the arm. What's odd about this was that this didn't trigger returning because he got hit yeah. by the second one. I would have thought returning would have been hit by this one. Well, I think the bottle the elixir of life triggered before returning we were talking about that in questions a bit yeah. today 
that there's a certain order of some of these things like Phoenix Pyre and and Twice Born and um, other stuff and which right. one or Life After Death like is, do they have a sequence? Yeah, and I think the statement was yes. There's an order that they are applied if you take multiple lethal damage. Right. Mm. So anyway, what apparently that order is I don't quite know. Apparently the bottle is not enough to actually guarantee you don't die. Because <laughs> yeah. if this other one rolled higher or hit a different limb or whatever. If it was a head yeah. or, or a body, yeah. Yeah. Wow. And now we have an, an attack on a throne. With and just a, a crew. Oh, my God. Well, there's a golem. A but golem. Other and, than, powered no... and water golem, too. Yeah, but no, um... What was he trying to cast? Oh, he tried to vortex of returning out. Oh, oh no. Oh, it's a zinger. Oh, bummer. Oh, look at the fire. That is one Holy thing, cow. like... Versus these storm demons, like, copper plate on important casters. I'm telling you, like, it's ridiculous. Well, that's what I was saying. He really did need some... I guess he figured the... Oh, man. Yeah. Well, that hurt. That hurt. Yeah, that was so, that was brutal. Can we check thrones for a sec? Because I'm just curious. How yeah. close does this put Pangaea? Oh, it's going to put him real close. So he's now got he's got the throne of death, which he hasn't claimed. So that's one, two. He has, you need eight to win. I think we've miscounted right. these earlier too. So it could be. Um, one, two. Um, throne of fire. He just got three. Outer throne. That's four. Golden five throne. That's five. And then this is six. So he has six, so he still needs two more. Uh, okay. Okay. But this would be uh this would be the end of the NAP then, I believe. That's right. From what I remember. So, so this would be the official end of that NDP. Right. So in theory, Vanheim could be able, I think he's licensed to attack him now, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's and my vice understanding versa. of how that yeah. agreement was written. That's a, a very complicated non-aggression pact. But yeah. I don't uh a Perun special. Right. That's exactly right. That's funny. <laughs> um, well, I've, I've seen some of those giant documents that Perun writes oh, within know. the game. That's yeah. really quite something. It's thoughtful. And then, you know, because there's so many mm -hmm. different things people can think. And a, a lot of his naps are like clarifying edge cases, but which is, I think, a good thing to do, sort of, except nobody has, who, sure. who's got time for that? But he also has a lot of kind of weird legalese stuff that I would never sign with him, so. Yeah, well, I think, I think, um, I think Perun only ever kind of played a game at a time. Yeah. Well, not, not a hell of a lot of games, yeah. anyways. Um, okay, so, but that's important. So he's been camping on top of this throne for forever, and he's finally got it. Oh. There's something interesting. What's that? I moved out to put something of oh, Pangaea yeah. under siege. There we go. Look at that. Atta there boy. Atta boy. Go for he it. Kills a vampire oh, thug here and a hierophant. What are these guys equipped his with? His patrol army's holding up. Oh, some white centaurs too. Mm -hmm. This is a sizable commitment. Has life for life. Demon knights run in and just lance these uh, these white centaur. Well, no, black black Templars, right? No, these are demon knights. Oh, those are demon knights. You're right. Yeah. No, the color didn't look right to me. There, there were some that were black knights, too, so. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. But, yeah, just Rex Pangea here. Moves nice. on top of this fort. Lot has knocked it over, so he can take it. I don't actually know. Oh, and he's... I don't, he's think, I don't think Pangea any... can defend this. I think this palisade no, he's going to get. Yeah, almost pushed outwards. To sort of block any land-based routes, so right. Pan would have to fly, but he can't he fly with these or... demons from here. Like these are the flying demons; they can't get here. No, I don't think they can. And this is the inner throne that he was saying is like the his last stand spot. So he's going to focus right. on holding this area. Well, this is good, kind of. Uh, I mean, Ohm got put under siege, so that's not so good. Yeah. Pan with the, the wow. casual lines of strange color. Oh my god, there's still some of those in the <laughs> game. I know. These are, for those of you who don't know, these are End units, right? So he would have stolen yeah. these from End. We just had them lying around for, you know, 50 turns. 50 turns ago. That's kind of funny. 
Yeah. No foul vapors. Astral geyser there. I think that was send a coke toast or whatever. I had to guess. Oh, yeah. Who cast that? I don't see any blood slaves. A lot of times it's a vampire oh, that will no. cast it. Oh, oh, there we are. Oh. It has to be a vampire oh, yeah. with an empowerment. Yeah. Oh, this guy did it. Send a coke toast. Oh, there you go. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. I, I, I'm sure I said it wrong, too. I... Kokitos? I, yeah, I think it's... it's yeah. Claws of Kokitos, I think, is the name of the spell. Let's look it up. Let's see. Did I say it right? Blood, nine. Claws of Kokitos. Okay. Yeah. I got close enough. Yeah. You know. Yeah, that's... Hooked that's on phonics works for me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Whoop. Killed some main ads oh, here. Oh. Yeah, but that was very minimal minimal right. effort. Uh, but, you know, he's actually in an interesting position. He can probably... I mean, Pangea can probably move a sizable force on top of Ulm. Mm -hmm. But he probably... I mean, this is not a very scary army here. I mean, it deserves some respect because there's 25 for White Centaur. But he can probably clear this fort... Clear his cap and take this fort from Pangea this turn. Yeah, and I it's looking a little bit like Pangea is, I wouldn't say distracted, but concentrating his efforts. Yeah. I mean, he'd like that throne, Pangea would. Right. But I think he's got a couple of easier thrones to finish the game. Um, yeah. The one down by Satis is probably, although you'd have to deal with Pelagia intervening, but you know, that one there by Satis looks pretty possible. Yeah, I think to it... lock down and siege. And he's got two doom stacks near it. I don't, I don't think he pans in a hurry that'll really go after the throne, but he's I, I mean, I feel like he's probably gonna go on it, but you know, especially like this throne, like I mean, Sai's a better player than me, so he'll have better intuition. I would not be inclined to want to try like to take a throne right next to Arco. While he's got yeah. Nexus up, I just, I don't have balls that big. I'm not going to do that shit. Like, no thank you. I might put it I'm under siege. Kind of, I might try to crack I'm just it. I'm kind of looking around, sort of going, I wonder which thrones. You know, he, I'm sure he's got targets in his mind of, here's the two more thrones for the win. Right. And how do I go at them and then keep anybody from interfering long enough to finish the game? I mean, he has a lot of thrones on this board of the Vanheim, too. He's got... This Ashdod throne. He's got this throne here. Right. Yes. Um, yeah, I say a lot. It's really... Oh, no, he's got well, this this three. throne here. Yeah, there's three thrones one, over two, here that he three. can come take. So if he gets either one of these and one of these three, he wins. That's gay. Yeah. So yeah, he's got options. He could also technically go for this one, too. Right? This one's not very mm -hmm. well defended. So he's got a lot of different thrones he could go after. Well, I'm, I would what, be less inclined do. to go something right next to our <laughs> to to, what he, what he, to Nexus. What he, what he might do is threaten four at the same time. Yeah, and then just force everybody to divert. Right. Yeah, I and think he. Gotta... Yeah, I, I think that's how Sai's going to play it too. Like, get people doing desperate things, spending a lot of their money, but don't really commit. Like getting yes. Arco to do fantastic things and start showing what like ha what he's gonna do to defend this, fine, right? But don't put anything you care about here, because <laughs> it will get killed. I agree. Um, so th I mean, this was a pretty. I mean, okay, I I was about to say I almost got caught saying this was a pretty good turn for Alm. Alm lost two forts this turn. <laughs> <laughs> Three. Three? He lost three forts this turn. Yeah. Oh, he lost this one too. So he lost this no. fort, this palisade. He lost this one. One, two, three, four. He lost four this turn. This one. Wait, what was the fourth one? Down below. The one on the bottom. Oh, on the pond. this one too. Yeah. He lost four okay, forts so this turn. Not a great turn for all. <laughs> no, no. But. But at least. But he's counterattacking. Yeah, he's counterattacking. You know, he lost four forts this turn, but by God, he's going to get a palisade back next turn. So yeah, I'll uh, I'll give him a toast for that. That's right. Um. Yeah. You Ooh. know. 
Fort Graf Ooh. going down, Fort Graf going up. Uh, okay, let's... There's not too much else to look at. What I do want to look no. at before we close out this video is I just want to see what Vanheim is getting ready for. Like, what, what we got happening? He's sieging this back. Okay, so that must be part of the agreement. Right, He because he wants these seers. That was, he, that was his... Yeah. I don't know if we mentioned it. We didn't get it. I think we should have mentioned it in the last episode or something. I, I meant to say it. But one of the conditions that Van Heim, that was made on Vanheim from Ashdod for them to make peace was that Vanheim had to agree to not eat Ulm. Right. And that, to me, I would have never accepted as Vanheim. Like, I think that the the deal these two have to make like the game state they have to envision is that they like this is not going to be an easy fight against pangea obviously right mm -hmm. they have to basically just burrow into pangea for a long time and basically envisage the world where they are the only two land powers left and then pelagia's maybe carved up a bit of something and so there'll, there'll mm -hmm. be some appeasement of the fish but otherwise, they carve up all the land and try to like get almost all of it from Pangea. Now, Pangea will like try to turn them against against one another, but and, and so it may not go that way. But I think that's how you have to like like this is going to be such a long and hard war. That's how you have to see it. Now, if you see each other that way, if you see each other as like we are going to be for the next twenty turns as we're trying to beat down Pangea, like mm -hmm. steadfast brothers, you have to realize like Alma's out of the game. Like you get, you want your steadfast brother to get the Ulmish land, as long as it's not going to put him in position for a throne victory, which it might. So yeah. that's like an important yeah. detail to look at. But, um, but you can mit those things can be mitigated. So you can say, hey, look, I'm worried about you getting a throne victory. You need to eat Ulm, but to do that, you're going to have to give me one of your thrones. Right. Yeah, that's a that's a reasonable alternate negotiation. Although you know, it does sound like. A lot of the negotiations by the later part of the game were were bogging down in player exhaustion, maybe. Yeah. Or, I mean, just watching some of the communications that have happened on the Discord, um, I don't think everybody was really getting along all that well. Yeah. You know, a long, long, long 18 months of playing this game, they might just be kind of sick of each other. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> That's true. I, I don't know, but... I can imagine it's possible. I know that's happened to me where I've gotten kind of sick of trying to do Diplo with the team because I just yeah. can't seem to... You know, these guys, they, they haven't seem fought to reach before, really. a win-win kind of salute. Yeah. Some of it, though, I think is like... I I don't know, because I'm kind of like... I, I do did some kind of mediation and, and stuff in my former life, and some of the things... Like, sometimes you just have to say something, like to reframe the discussion and the argument... And be like, look, mm -hmm. like we're gonna have to be like buds for like twenty turns. Otherwise, we should just quit. And if we're gonna be buds, then you shouldn't be doing things like trying to screw your butt over. Like these guys actually have to be buds, and that would mean they he would want Vanheim to eat Alm, but he would need Vanheim to make considerations or concessions so that's a reasonable thing for to happen to happen. So that you know, well, another viewpoint on that is. If Vanheim, Vanheim did stop trying to eat home, which meant that Pangea got it. Exactly. Well, so that wasn't good. That's not good. <laughs> that's not you good. Know, if, if, if Vanheim had had a bunch of siege armies, even sitting on the forts, Pangea could not have moved on a lot of that stuff because yeah. they were at peace. There's, that's um, a pretty significant factor. You know, as you think about like mediation and negotiation, the, the way it should work is you want to see what the other person wants dearly that you can give them cheaply, right? right. And Vanheim wanted dearly to eat Ulm. And Ashdod could give them very cheaply that. It would cost Ashdod nothing. In fact, it would be good for Ashdod. As well, long as it didn't put Vanheim in a position for a throne victory because it would weaken Pan. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. I'm agreeing with you there that I think Ashdod made a, a Oh yeah, I know a, we're in I think firm that was agreement. A decision that wasn't Pardon me? Oh, I said yeah, I wasn't arguing with you. I knew we were in firm agreement. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I think 
like what are we back five turns or so when that agreement was made if yeah. um if if they had just said okay vanheim you can you know you might as well eat half of them because the faster you get there the less pangea can get right see now pangea is getting all of all right and he's gonna so he you know he's just totally blocked off anybody in that area and so we got on this little tangent here just looking to see what vanheim was positioning mm -hmm. He's got some army sieging through Pelagia stuff here, but he yeah. doesn't have much positioned to take Ulmish infrastructure. He's got a little bit here. He's got this army here. I don't really see what he's going to... He's got some stuff here. Now, this is the least defended part of Pangaea right here. But there's very little... Well, no, some of it could be glamoured that we don't see. No, we would see glamoured. We wouldn't see stealthy, oh, though. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know. And, like and the, I am operating under the assumption that he would not have moved to taxi in this turn because right. he had not known about the taking of that throne. Right. But now he can redirect. Right. That That's how I'm looking. That the right. next turn we should see Vanheim able to act. Right. So, yeah, I don't see... Vanheim really in too much of a position. I mean, I think the biggest thing would be, yeah, taking Ulmish stuff. I think like for Vanheim, it's hitting this weak, the only weak flank of Pangaea, which is right here, and mm. most importantly, fighting him for the for the Ulmish stuff. Yeah, yeah, just because if they let him have all of them, they Vanheim is the one who could keep Pan from getting that inner throne, right? And that's pretty important. And he also, if he, if he, if they had get like as part of the agreement, he could eat on. He could have arranged some like accidental bounces with Pangaea to like interfere with Pangaea taking forts. Like, oh, I bet he's gonna raid here. Let's move a storm demon stack or something. You sure. know, sure. And like yeah, really heavily contested this Ulm stuff. Yeah, I agree there. Yeah. Um. Okay. And also, I think I actually like Ulm and uh, Vanheim, I think had a pretty good relationship. Like they talked their way out of several wars. Like sure, Ulm turned on Vanheim a little bit at the, I'm, I might have said the wrong nations. Ulm and Vanheim had a pretty good relationship. They talked their way out of several war, wars. Sure, Ulm and Vanheim like uh, fought at the end where Ulm Ashdod, uh, you know, 2v1'd him, but yeah. Yeah, I, I would talk to Alm and be like, "Hey, dude, it looks like you're out of the game. Um, I want to fight and see if we can stop Pangaea from winning. Like, how about like you? You can fight me if you want to, but like, I think like, what about if I just like buy your forts off you so that I get your yeah, land sure. and you use that to like hold on to whatever you want? You know, yeah, like, exactly. Yeah, so that he's not stretched so thin. And I mean, Alm might not, not want to do that. So thin. He might not." But, you know, it's worth asking. But I would think Vanheim would have enough something. You know, he can buy it with blood slaves or with gems or even if he doesn't have a lot of gold. Yeah. All right. Well, Maryland, another turn down. And uh, yeah. I had one thing to think about. Um, how many gems do you think Nexus could be worth? I think he's probably getting, um, see, I have some knowledge because I like, Ar Arco told me some things too after the game. Okay. So it's, um, well, I'm just, uh, yeah. So I think, like, I'm I think thinking, he's getting around I think these... 150 a turn from it, maybe a okay. hundred. I, I can't remember what he told me, but it's, it's not like two or 300 gems. It's like 100 right. to 150. Well, I just wondered if, um, if people would slow down their gem spending to avoid feeding Pelagia, my guess would be no, because they oh, can't yeah. afford to. Not right the now. The situation is too desperate. They've got to spend everything they can. Yeah, definitely. And and they're all geared up to survive almost always ast uh, astral corruption problems. Yeah. You know, we, you hear the odd story of, I mean, I mean losing all a whole, to a got to with it, the yeah. counter fees. Good grief. It's only three gems, man. Right. Yeah. That's some serious horror marks. Yeah. But anyways, that was the last thing I thought of. Right. I feel like in some ways, I feel like this game's like 
narrowing, like tunneling in, like Pangea is just pulling farther and farther and farther ahead. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, we have fireworks are about to go off. We've got Pelagia now in control of Nexus again, which means he's going to start spending in the next like one or two turns fighting Pangea. Uh, Vanheim doesn't have a ton of armies, but he's about to turn what he does have onto uh, to Pangea too. So yeah. it's going to be exciting to watch all that shake down, and we will see if Pangea really can fight the whole map with against Nexus. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All so. right, very cool. All right, see you next well, time, guys. Yeah, busy evening. Busy evening, but that's right. Very productive. All right, take care, folks. See ya. Bye, guys.